Welcome back to Limit Breaker Fitness. My name's Monty. I studied human physiology and I used that expertise to lose over 50 pounds. So today we're going to answer the question, is creatine bad for the kidneys? There's this idea that creatine might be linked to kidney damage. And so today we're going to go over what creatine is and how it might be linked to that, if at all. So to get started, let's ask ourselves, what is creatine? Well, creatine is a naturally occurring molecule that we get through our diet. Things like beef, chicken, fish, all naturally have high levels of creatine in them. So it's not really anything that's man-made or whatnot. Yes, we have supplements for it, and we'll get to those uh, a little later, but it's not something that's foreign or new. It's always been around. Now, what's going on with creatine when it gets into our body? To understand that, we have to talk about what's going on in our muscle cells. So we're going to go ahead and draw this big muscle cell here. And I'm not going to draw everything in it because, frankly, I don't want to. What we need to understand, though, is what's going on when creatine enters our muscle cells. So creatine, it wants to get into our muscles, and that's because our muscles use a molecule known as ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and this is the energy molecule. This is the molecule that's being used to provide energy whenever we're contracting any of our muscles. So right now, as I'm curling my arm, or uh, doing the bicep curl here, I'm using ATP. And the more strenuous the activity, like the bicep curl, the more weight that's on it, the more ATP my muscle needs. So where is it going to get this ATP? Well, there's two main sources that it gets it from. It gets it from fats, and it gets it from carbs. Excuse my writing. I know, it's terrible. Always has been. But... Yeah, so ATP, it comes from fats and carbs. Now, the thing is, our body can't instantly start breaking down fats and carbs to meet the increased demands in ATP when we start working out. So this is where creatine comes in, because the creatine comes in, and it's going to go ahead, and we'll switch markers here to make it a little easier to see. The creatine comes into the muscle, and it's going to bind to ATP, so these two are going to combine and become ATP-C. And the purpose of this, think of it like a little emergency fund in terms of energy. We start working out, we have an increased demand in ATP, our body needs some time to produce more by breaking down fats and carbs. So it dives into this emergency fund until it can break down enough fats and carbs to sustain whatever activity it is that we're doing. So anything between about 30 seconds to one minute, it's going to be using the ATP that's combined to the, with the creatine that's in our system before it can then switch over to these other uh, sources, fats and carbs. So if it's using creatine as an emergency fund, so to speak, for energy, then the more creatine that we have in our system the more ATP we have readily available. And this is why when we have a creatine supplement, we see a large increase in our uh, ability to lift weights. We can lift more weight and we can lift uh, for longer periods of time. And we have shorter recovery time between sets because we have these increased creatine contents within our muscles. So that's what our body's using it for. Now, with all that being said, this only occurs when there's water present. You see, as the creatine comes into the system, it brings water with it as well. And you get a bunch of water here inside the cell. And what happens is that water causes it to swell up and it gets even bigger. And this is where we see the increased size in our muscles come in. It's water that's being pulled into the muscles. And we're not retaining water. Uh, well, we sort of are, but we're retaining it within the muscles. And that's going to give them a much fuller and better looking uh, effect as well. So that's what creatine's doing in the muscle. 
But what happens when there isn't any water present? What happens when we're sweating a lot, we lose a bunch of the water, the water gets out of there? Well, what's going to happen is the creatine, it's going to change shape at a molecular level. So grab the red marker here again. The creatine is going to turn into something called creatinine. And this creatinine is completely useless when it comes to our energy uh, pathways here in the muscle. So the body is going to take the creatine or creatinine and it's going to take it out into our bloodstream. From our bloodstream, it's going to go to the kidneys where it's going to get filtered out. And then it gets filtered out and it goes out when you go to the bathroom. It'll draw a little, little toilet here. There, that's, uh, that's my little toilet. <laughs> so creatine is used to help us with our energy levels in the presence of water. Without water, it turns into creatinine. And the creatinine is then dropped into the bloodstream filtered out by the kidneys and then we get rid of it. So what's going on here that's making us think there's a problem? Are the kidneys unable to process it or is the creatinine causing damage to the kidneys? Well what's happening is when we go in to take a test usually they'll take a urine test and they'll measure the levels of creatinine that are in the urine and if the creatinine levels are high this could be an indication that the kidneys here aren't functioning properly. But if we're taking a creatine supplement, then our creatinine levels are going to be naturally high. And so it's not that the kidneys are being damaged or that they're not functioning correctly. It's that we're getting a false positive. Uh, let me write this here. Running out of space. So because the creatinine levels are high because of the creatine supplement, a false positive occurs and it doesn't mean that there's kidney damage occurring. What it means is that if we suspect that there is some sort of kidney problem, we have to use some other kind of test. In that case, they'll probably take a blood sample and take a more advanced test using that. Now, if you want to read a study that supports this, I'll have that linked down below. I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. I'll link that study down below. And so as you read through it, you'll see that creatine, it's not only perfectly safe, it's one of those supplements that really everybody should be taking. And for that, you should want to be taking creatine monohydrate. And I'll leave another study discussing the different types of creatine and which one's more effective. But all the research shows that creatine monohydrate, you know, I'll write it, I'll write it here for you in green. Creatine monohydrate. All the research shows that that's the most effective kind and that we need about five grams per day. This is going to depend on uh, how big you are, you know, man, woman, you know, fat, not fat, muscular, not muscular, all these different things. But aim for about five grams of creatine per day. And you'll be able to see all of the benefits here without having to worry about kidney damage. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the I'll leave a study talking about the different kinds of creatine. And it'll tell you, it'll show you how creatine monohydrate is if you want to nerd out like I do. There's a bunch of little numbers and whatnot. But basically, every other kind of creatine is more so like the companies marketing it and you know trying to make a quick buck, as is the case with a lot of supplements out there. So, quick overview. Creatine gets into the muscle, binds to ATP, acts as an emergency fund for our energy. Then, when there's not enough water, it turns into creatinine and it gets filtered out but it can create a false positive because they test for creatinine when it comes to kidney problems. And if we're taking a creatine supplement like creatine monohydrate, it can cause a false positive. 
Guys, if you found this video helpful, uh, if you learned something, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, send it to a friend who uh, needs to know this or maybe is a little confused about the concept. And if you're looking to fast track your results, you can always sign up for my one-on-one -on -one online coaching over at LimitBreakerFitness.com or you can just use the link down in the uh, pinned comment. So see you later.